Hey guys, OG Albina here, bringing you guys my APA Academy Week 12 battle against uh, Kurt the Buzzwool and his Brisbane Buzzwool. Um, there isn't going to be a big team builder for this video, uh, mainly because this is going to be a two part video. Uh, you'll see why later, um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a two part video. I don't want to really spoil anything, but yeah, you'll see what happens uh, you know, after this battle. But I don't want this video to drag out too, too long. So I'm not going to do a full-on team builder portion. However, I will tell you the team that um, I am bringing to show you the sets on screen. As well as the team that, um, you know, the roster that my opponent has and what he could have brought. Just so you have that background knowledge. Um, but yeah, Kurt's team consists of the Zygarde 50%, Tapu Fini, Gengar, Metagross, Araquanid, Mega Heracross, Excadrill, Gigalith, Licky Licky, Claydol, and Alolan Raticate. Um, so the team we're bringing is a very hyper-offensive team. Uh, this is a... Uh, before I jump into this, I want to preface this is pretty much a must win game. Um, if we want to clinch our playoff spot, we do have to beat Kurt here. Um, we either have to beat him or lose 3 0 or less. If we lose 4 0, we are tied for the A seed with odds. And if we lose 5 0 or 6 0, we are out of playoffs no matter what. So this is a very, very important game at this point. Um, and we do definitely want to win. Uh, that being said, I didn't really like my uh, offense and my defensive matchup, so I ended up going with a very hyper offensive team, uh, trying to exploit his defense because his defense wasn't very good versus me either, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, starting off, we have a mixed Mega Glade with a freeze dry for the um, Tapu Fini and then Ice Shard for stuff like the Zygarde and a weakened Excadrill, and then just Double Edge and Earthquake hit the rest of his team pretty, pretty hard. Next up, after that, we have a very bulky Dual Dance Landers with Rock Falls, Earthquake, Fly, Swords Dance. Um, Flying EMZ is kind of a nuke. Anything that flies E doesn't hit, Earthquake does. This is a great, great win con in this game if we can position it correctly. Um, after that, we have our Starmie rocking out with the Kassib Berry. Three attacks recover. This is a um, this is a very good lure for the Gengar if you scarf Gengar. Gengar is really good versus my team. If we can lure that thing and be at a high enough amount of health, we can knock it out with the Psychic, which would be, you know, obviously super beneficial. We have a Taunt Stealth Rock Lead um, Endeavor like rock dust with zero ivs and hp defense and spadef so we always get the um so we always get the boost um go, always get down to our sash and knock out that thing uh you know are able to endeavor stuff and then pick it off with the cell rock and stuff like that next up we have our scolipede rocking out with the swords dance poison dub earthquake mega horn life orb great late game cleaner if we can chip some things down if we can get to plus two we'll outspeed everything obviously even the extra draw in the sand um and then lastly Bad crop job. Let's see if I can pick. Oh no, that's the layout. Ah, we have our Uxie right here. It's dual screens with light clay, memento, and psychic. Um, this is to help our setup, such as our scolipede and our um, landers, really get up their sword stances and rock polishes and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's jump right into the battle right here as I fix the crop job really quick. Let's see how fast I can do it without making it look horrible. Maybe, maybe just a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, as I do this, uh, I am going to lead off with my uh, Lycan Rock Dusk. Its whole point is to lead here and get its um, get brought, brought down to a sash and hopefully endeavor something. We do two hit KO the uh, Gengar with Adam and a Cell Rock. So that can also be, you know, a course of action we take and we get brought down. Honestly, a lead Gengar would have been great because that would have brought us down to our sash and we could have, you know, to it KO'd it and uh, gotten our endeavor off on something else. As he's going to truly lead off with the Zygarde, and I don't want this thing to set up. I don't really have much for a setup Zygarde on this team other than Glalie Ice Shard, but if he's like Coil or something like that, he can definitely, uh, you know, or like Dual Dance or something like that, he can definitely take advantage of our Lycan Rock if we, uh, you know, choose to not go for the Taunt here. So I'm going to go for the Taunt as he goes for the Thousand Arrows, and there's no way for me to really tell his set because that would have brought me down to my Sash regardless. Um, so yeah, this next turn right here, I am going to kind of scout for the extreme speed right here. I don't know if he's banded or not. I don't know if he's still set up or something. So I am going to switch out into my Uxie as he goes for another thousand arrows. And this is going to show us that he is most definitely banded. Um, this is a... He got a very, very high roll right here. Um, it is definitely in our favor to live this next thousand arrows as I'm going to like to get up a screen right here. And I go for the light screen for some reason. And this was a really, really big misplay. I'm going to pause right here. I don't know why I went for the light screen. Um... There's no reason for me not to go for the Reflect, and it actually shows that we're even faster than the Zygarde. So it's like a max HP Zygarde. We could have gotten up both of our screens right here. But I like to get up the Light Screen for some reason first, um, which again, I don't really know why. It was it was definitely a very, very bad play on my end. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I definitely should have done shouldn't have done so. But um, hey, you live and you learn, as he is going to be able to uh, knock us out with this next Thousand Arrows right here. Um, 
I believe, yeah. So the keys are going to be able to knock us out right here, unfortunately. So down goes our Oxy, and we're only able to get up a light screen. The only thing that really helps with is the Gengar and the Tapu Fini. Uh, but right here, I figured this is my best opportunity to get in my Lando and try and set it up and go for game for this. Um, so I am able to live two Adamant uh, Bandit Arrows from a Zygarde from full with the Intimidate. As we do get up our Swords Dance right here, and it shows us that we are faster. So this is a very bulky Zygarde, so we're going to need to pop our Z in order to knock it out, unfortunately. Um, as right here, he's going to go for the sword, uh, the thousand arrows. As I am going to go for the um, rock polish right here. Now, I probably should have just popped my Z on this turn because um, I could have gotten a rock polish up on pretty much everything else, and everything else wasn't as threatening to my Zygarde at this point. We outspent everything not named Gengar, and we still had our um, we still had our light screen up, which would have been great. But right here, he's going to bring us down as we do go for our. Um, Z fly, and we are spoilers going to be able to knock out a Zygarde. We knock out pretty much any Zygarde variant, unless he's like max defense, which we obviously know from the calcs before that he isn't. Um, we are going to be able to take out the Zygarde right here as the cool animation goes off. However, we did kind of set this up a little bit early because he still does have a full health Licky Licky in the back. And Licky Licky can, but if it's a max HP, we have a shot to knock it out with a plus two earthquake. If he is running any kind of defense or if he's max defense, we don't knock it out, unfortunately. As he goes into it right here, um, and this is when I wish that I went for the reflect because we could have lived two arrows into a body slam um, from this Licky Licky and pretty much still won this game. Um, honestly from this point as we are able to do a big chunk with that but it shows that he is very defensive as he gets off a body slam right here and he's able to knock out our lander so we would have been able to avoid that if we would have just run for the right screen but unfortunately we didn't um and down goes our lander so right here i am going to go straight out into my uh mega glalie as i can throw off my mega and throw off a double edge nothing really wants to take it um if the tabu fini comes in and gets weakened that's great for me uh, it just makes this end game with Glalie a little bit better as this is looking to be one of my better win cons If I can eliminate the sand we can pretty much uh, take on anything that's left on this team And right here he's gonna go into his Gigalith and if he is just a max HP Gigalith We can potentially 2 it KO him with the double edge um, But if you run any kind of defense again kind of with the Licky Licky situation We don't actually knock him out um, with two double edges right here We're gonna go for it and we are going to see that he is running a fair amount of defense and he is able to definitely take two of those as we take a little bit of recoil and sand chip and i'm going to switch out my mega glalie because again there's no reason for me um to sack this thing off so early as i'm going to go into my like rock expecting him to maybe want to get up rocks because he could live any hit from me um as you're just going to go straight from the stone edge though and make a good play and knock out our like rock so unfortunately we're not able to get our endeavor off on anything um and we're down three to five right now. So the game's looking pretty tough. Uh, I'm gonna go into my Starmie and I kind of do have to make an aggressive play right here as I'm gonna predict him to go out and do his type of Fini. I'm gonna throw off a Thunderbolt and this analytic Thunderbolt is gonna do a lot um, to this type of Fini. He has a chance to knock it out um, with an analytic Thunderbolt into regular, you know, even if he is a very spadef Fini. So right here, he is going to switch in that um, as I am able to get off a pretty big Thunderbolt and um, you know threaten it potentially with a knockout the next turn which would be absolutely amazing if we could you know you know get that roll and potentially knock it out um but we are going to see that he is a very very spadestini right here and he is going to actually live this thunderbolt on literally like one health um and get off a pretty big moon blast and do around half to us which again sucks like it really 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 does suck um and he is able to get the special attack drop as well which does suck but he is going to go down to the um sand trip this next turn so down goes the Feeny, which is great for our glalie again in the end game if we can get rid of sand i really do think our glalie can just kind of win at this point our glalie plus our scolipede um that's right here he's going to go into his extra drill and there's no reason for me to allow him to set up a sword stance if he does the game's over so i stay in just predicting um you know hoping he'd overplay and go for the sword stance but he does he makes the correct play and just knocks out our starmie with his extra drill um as right here, my only hope at this point is to go into my um, my Glalie and waste his turn of stand. If he wasn't Smooth Rock uh, Gigalith, then he would be, you know, potentially, um, his sand would run out and I could go into my uh, Scolipede and knock this thing out and, um, you know, or potentially even set up a Swords Dance or something like that. As he uh, does make the correct play though, um, and he knocks out our Glalie, and it turns out he was Smooth Rock, so this game is pretty much over as he is able to knock out our um, Excadrill, our uh, Scolipede right here with the Z Fly, which is a cool bring on his end. Um, he was probably for our chest, not more so, uh, but we didn't end up bringing that to this game as he is able to knock us out with the Z Aerial Ace, the Super Sonic Sky Strike. So, what this means, uh, 
as I said earlier, we lost this game 4-0, which means we tied with odds uh, for the eighth seed. We were both 6-6 six and six plus 1 differential. Normally, that would go to a head-to-head -head matchup. Whoever won the head-to-head -head matchup would get the playoff spot. And I took over this team for uh, BM, and odds took over a team as well for Oboe. Um, and earlier in the season, before we joined, uh, BM actually did beat Oboe. So off of that, we should technically get into playoffs based on head-to-head. -head. But uh, the uh, the academy admin team uh, they made a they made a decision that uh, a decision that I don't necessarily agree with, but we won't get into that. That because it wasn't me and Odds who played, um, that that head-to-head -head doesn't count, and that we had to play head-to-head -head in the tiebreaker that night because this was on Sunday night when me and Kurt played because he wasn't able to play any other time this week. So literally right after I had lost this game, they told me, hey, oh, and you need to you need to play this game before the night ends um, for your playoff spot. So I basically had 30 minutes to build a team and play odds for our playoff spot, which is going to be on Showdown. Um, and it's gonna be the second part to this video. So let's go ahead and let's just jump to that battle. All right, guys, here we are with the um, playoff tiebreaker. Um, so again, I'm not gonna do a team builder, like a full on team builder and explain all the EVs and stuff for this, um, but I will let you know odds team and you know the six that I decided to bring and just show them on the screen just so you uh, have that background knowledge going into the battle. Um, before this starts, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my, uh, my buddy Lapis, she helped me build uh, this team very very quick like I said I had about pretty much 30 minutes to build this and then I had to play um, and it was it was a bit overwhelming so I need a little bit of help to brainstorm um, I did most of the EVs and stuff like that but she had a couple really really nice set, um, suggestion ideas because this matchup was pretty rough there was a you know I had to we had to be pretty creative with you know building these sets and stuff like that um, but yeah with that being said odds team is the Mega Charizard X Suicune, Reuniclus, Alolan Muck, Delmize, Aselgore, Thunderous Eye, Togekiss, Gwiscor, Pissimian, and Pharaoh Seed. Uh, and the six that we decided to bring, we started off with the Scolipede right here. Three attacks, Waterium Z. Um, really, really good win con versus his team. He doesn't appreciate switching into dual, slabs, dual stabs plus Aqua Tail at all. Um, uh, plus two Aqua Tail has a chance to knock out Gliscor after a little bit of chip, and plus two Aqua Tail also always knocks out a Mega Charizard X um, if he's no bulk from full with our investment. I forget what the ADHP was for, um, but it's for something. Uh, next up, we have our landers right here, rocking out with the Yachi Berry, Swords Dance, three attacks with Punishment um, and Edge Quake. Punishment's a really cool tech for the Reuniclus, which is definitely a bring versus my team. I don't have a Dark type on my roster, so Dual Dance with um, Acid Armor and Calm Mind Recover Psychic is very, very likely versus my team. Punishment's a really cool tech for that because um, it does more damage depending on how many boosts the opponent has. So if he has like two Calm Minds up and I send in my landers and I go for a Punishment, I'm doing around 50%. Which is a pretty cool, um, pretty cool tech to have in my opinion, um, and yeah. So next up, we also have our Mega Glalie rocking out with Spikes Ice Shard Return Explosion. Um, Mega Glalie forces a lot of switches versus his team. His team is very, very ice weak. Other than the Suicune, he has nothing that wants to switch into an ice move from Mega Glalie, really. Um, and all of his defoggers are really, really pressured by Mega Glalie. We pretty much one shot all of them with you know ice coverage, obviously. So having uh that option to force switches get up spikes and threaten the defoggers that want to defog the spikes away and potentially just get them back up again um it was a really really nice option an explosion is a good just one-time nuke on something uh if we want to knock out the zard if it tries to set up on us or um it actually does around 50 60 percent to a max hp suicune which is another really cool cow it does a it does a ton to that thing um despite being resisted uh, you know being an adamant refrigerated explosion is going to do a good chunk um, but yeah, next up we have a really cool set in our Uxie right here, um, Skill Swap U-Turn Toxic Memento. So this set is um, kind of a Reuniclus lore, like I said, that is probably the biggest threat to my team with that Dual Dance set. Uh, this is a good way to counteract that. If we can keep our Uxie around, we can Toxic that thing. Even though it does have Magic Art, we can Skill Swap that away, we'll take its Magic Guard, it'll get our Levitate, and it'll start taking that Toxic Chip to where it's either forced out, or it is beaten 1v1 by our Uxie, because, you know, if he's Monopsychic, he's not doing much damage to us. Um, you know in return which is pretty cool um, and yeah next up we also um, next up on the team we have our Dratagon right here which is going to be our main uh, Mega Charizard X check which is pretty weird being that we're a dragon type we're a dragon but we are rocking with the Bonberry so we can live any plus one hit from the Zard even a plus one outrage and it'll take a little bit of rough skin chip we can glare that thing and we can also dragon tail it around if it tries to set up this is going to be our stealth rocker versus the team again i really like the hazard stack approach if we can just pressure it um we can pressure his defog just pretty well in my opinion um and yeah that is going to be our dreadagon and then lastly we have our chestnut rocking out oh you can't even see it because the crop job's all weird 
Um, we have our chestnut right here. There we go. Uh, rocking out with bulk up synthesis, seed bomb, and facade. Another really cool set. Um, you know, this is to beat a um, Calm Mind Suicune, uh, you know, 100% of the time, as long as he's not carrying, you know, Ice Beam or something like that. Um, because if he burns us with the Scald, we can still break his subs if we, you know, bulk up alongside it. Or if we throw off his burned facades and stuff like that, it's definitely breaking a sub, which is pretty cool. Um, and I believe the attack investment is to guaranteed break the sub of a no with of a max HP Suicune if we're burned. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the team. Let's jump into the battle. While I do a quick little uh, fix with the crop. Go a little bit. You guys can see the chat. I don't think there's anything crazy in that. Um, but yeah, the team that I was elected to bring looks like he went with the Reuniclus, the Suicune, the um, Lola Muck, Charizard X, Thunderous, and Togekiss. So I am going to lead. Oh man, I have Starmie on the layout still from the last light battle. Uh, let's take off Starmie. And I think Chestnut's there. Yeah, cool. Messed up. Spoilers, this isn't my first time trying to record this. The first time I did, the audio got all messed up, so we are redoing it. Um, but yeah, like I said, I am going to lead off with my landers. Um, I can let anyone hit from anything on his team, and I pressure everything pretty immensely. The only thing that really forces me out is the Suicune, because the Suicune can probably lift a plus two hit from where it's at. Um, but everything else, nothing really wants to switch in, that's for sure. <sighs> Man. Uh, yeah, Dev, nothing really wants to switch in, that's for sure. And... Um, Again, with our Yachi, we can live any one hit. As I'm going to lead off with the Landers, as he leads off with the um, Thunders, and like I said, I can live an HP Ice from this thing. I don't want to let it set up, so he's going to go for the HP Ice, and he's going to pop our Yachi as we do live that. And we go for the Stone Edge, showing us that he is a Focus Sash lead uh, Thunders. So right here, I'm going to switch out, expecting another HP Ice, as he goes for the Hidden Power right here again. Um, and we get our free Mega off with our Glaive. I should have gone for a Spike in this turn, in all actuality, but I don't want to play around with this Thunders. Um, and I just went for the Ice Shard, potentially, if you wanted to stay and sack it off. But there's really no reason for me to do so. As he goes into the Suicune, and right here, he reveals the Toxic, which sucks. Because we, uh, I was okay with the chest not getting burned, but I was not okay with it getting Toxic, because then we were very whittled. So I'm going to throw off a Facade right here, expecting him to maybe want to switch out. As he goes for the Sub, and that doesn't break Sub, which shows us that he's a very bulky Suicune. Because like I said earlier, uh, we have enough attack investment to always break a max HP Suicune Sub with a boosted Facade. So he is running a ton of bulk. And right here, expecting him to protect or throw up another sub, I'm going to go into my Uxie. Unfortunately, if those up the sub, if threw up the protect, that would be great, because we are always faster um, than this Suicune with our Uxie, and we could have thrown off a Toxic. But right here, I'm going to U-turn, expecting another Toxic. I don't want to let my Uxie get poisoned. I'm going to go back into Chestnut, and as he protects right here, I believe I'm going to just synthesis up, which is great. Um, able to get back a little bit of health right here. So I'm just going to throw off the Seed Bomb and guarantee break this thing's sub. There's no reason to play around with facades anymore. He has no reason to switch out behind a sub. Um, so yeah, we are able to break that, um, disguise right there and take a little bit more poison chip. As right here, he's gonna go for another substitute as we go for a seed bomb again, breaking the sub. And right here, expecting him to go for the protect, I'm gonna switch out into my Uxie. Uh, but he actually ends up going for the substitute again. So at least he didn't toxic. I figured he'd want to protect maybe to preserve some health on this thing. Um, but unfortunately he did not as I'm going to go back out into my chestnut. As he go for the skull, <sighs> this was a good play. Excuse me. Uh, which was a good play, being that I probably wasn't going to let my Oxy get toxic. Just right here, he's going to throw off another Scald as I go for the Synthesis right here. Um, get back a little bit of health. And I believe at this point, I'm just going to stop messing around with this thing. I'm just going to kind of keep attacking it until I can break its sub. Um, you know, and chip this thing down, uh, which is, yeah, again, you know, super, super nice. As he ends up going for the sub right here, I guess forgetting that he was faster than me. Because um, he was running a, he was running a decent amount of speed, too, because uh, we were creeping a no-speed Suicune with our Chestnut. Um, but right here, he's going to throw off a sub, as I'm going to just throw off another Sea Bomb right here. And the Toxic Chip is going to bring us down to our last turn. It goes for the Protect, and down goes our Chestnut, unfortunately. Um, but we were able to prevent this thing from getting up a sub on whatever wanted to come in. So right here, I am going to go straight into my Oxy, and I am fast in this thing, so I'm going to throw off a Toxic. As he goes for another sub, which is great, because this thing is basically neutered at this point. Not much it can do versus our team at this point. Um, and I'm going to go for the U-turn because I don't want to let my Oxy get toxic as right here. He's going to go for the toxic um, as we go into our Glalie and he misses, which is unfortunate, honestly, because I would rather him toxic us than burn us right here, which he does with the Scald. Um, you know, as we end up getting up a spike, I'm just going to get up another layer right here. I know I can live another Scald into a burn into uh, the burn turn as he's going to go out into the uh, poison as our Glalie does get up two spikes, which is great. Um, you know, because his only defogs would be the Toad Kiss and the Thunder Assist. Right here, he's going to go into his Reuniclus. I'm going to throw off an Explosion. I'm still going to do 60% with a with a Burned Explosion, which is pretty crazy. Um, 
as I go into my Uxie right here, as he goes for the, um, as he goes for the recover, and I get the Toxic off, and then I'm going to Skill Swap on the next turn and get him poisoned, which is cool because now he's kind of forced out, um, and I can predict that and go for the U-turn and get right into my Scullipede, which is great, and set up a Swords Dance on this thing. I'm never too okay by Adamant Fire Punch, and right here he's going for the knockoff, and right here I should have Swords Dance again, but... I was scared that he would, you know, fire punch and shadow sneak me, and I didn't want to take that risk, so I end up just knocking it out. As he goes into the Togekiss, and he reveals the Kabia, and I, I figured he was, but I didn't really have another opportunity to set up the rest of this game, so I figured getting chip on this thing would be great. As down goes our Skullipede, and then we can go into our Landers and revenge this thing with the Stone Edge. Um, and then he's going to go into his Reuniclus right here, as uh, as I just pull the switch out right into my Oxy. There's no reason for me not to. Um... And I'm going to go for the U-turn, expecting him to want to switch out, expecting the um, the skill swap. But unfortunately, he doesn't, and I take a little bit more chip on my landers. I'm going to go for the stone edge because of the high crit chance, not going to lie. Because um, a crit would have knocked him out from there, but nothing else would have. Um, even the punishment being that he wasn't boosted. And then right here, I'm going to pull the switch out right into my um, right into my Oxy. As he goes um, for the side shock, and I get the, uh, the skill swap off as it takes a good 30% from Toxic, which is great. And right here, I'm going to go for the U-turn. Um, as the thunders comes in, we are able to pick that thing off with our Oxy. So it's another kill for Oxy, which is great. Um, and out comes the Charizard. As I go into my, um, as I go into my Dragon, which is great, because I figured if he wanted to ruin close, I can get up my rocks, and if not, he goes in the Zard, I can glare it, which is what we are able to do as he will assist us, and we dragon tail him out right here into the reuniclus right here i'm going to get up my rocks just so i can do even more residual to that zard as it comes in um basically make it useless with being paralyzed and then taking about 50 percent from chip and then i can dragon tail this reuniclus out as it tries to set up on me again um and then right here he is going to go for uh something i don't know because he ends up getting paralyzed and we are able to dragon tail him out and put him um in range of rocks again that didn't matter because he couldn't knock us out in any one hit um as he's going to knock out our Dredagon with a Z Psychic right here, which is a cool bring as well, um, just to not take as much from, uh, you know, knockoffs and stuff like that. But I am going to be able to go into my Oxy and pretty much steal this game. I can skill swap away the Toxic from this uh, Reuniclus, and I can kind of just spam Toxic or whatever move. I didn't want to spam U-turn. There's no reason to go out of my lander and waste that, um, you know, in case some reason he was able to crit through us and beat us with the Reuniclus. Uh, it outsped both of his threats in the back, so I could have just, you know, won with my landers in the back. Um, as right here, he is going to go down to the Toxic as we pretty much sealed this game, and the Zard is going to go down to the Hazard. So we are able to win this game, GG to odds. Again, this was a uh, very, very stressful match. Very, very, very stressful. Um, we played this, like I said, at like 2 a.m., um, and we are able to just kind of sneak in to the playoffs right here with the A seed, and, and as we are going to take on the 1 seed next week, which is going to be Silver. Um, Silver Smasher, who was actually 11 and 1 last season. I mean, this during the regular season. So hopefully, we can hand him his second loss. Um, I've beaten Silver before, but it's definitely no easy task. He is an amazing player. I always really look forward to playing him. Um, and it's going to be cool getting to use like that all star roster um, of picks. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, the draft analysis for our playoff roster will probably be up tomorrow or the next day, just so you guys know what we have um, available to us then. And then our battle against Silver will be up next week. So uh, be sure to sub so you can uh, stick around and catch the playoff game as it goes up. And hopefully see us win and move on to semifinals. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again for watching. I'll catch you guys later.